but these three druids have found themselves to be stranded in lunar orbit. They pressed the wrong button and their spacecraft decided to self-destruct. And there is only one way for them to get home. They need to land on the lunar surface safely so they can run to the lunar base, take a rocket to Drew, and then go back to see their crying families. The three druids go by Yan Lekun, Jebediah, and of course number 1.3634. Unfortunately, these druids have a big issue. They have a limited supply of oxygen, and Jebediah has decided to steal the most oxygen. That means that number 1.3634 has the least amount of oxygen, Yan Lekun has the next least amount of oxygen, and Jebediah, of course, has the most amount of oxygen. We need to design three lunar landers to get these three back to the lunar base, and due to the limited amount of oxygen, we only have a limited amount of time. So let's begin by designing number 1.3634's lander, and we only have about 30 seconds to do so, so let's go. With only 30 seconds, this guy had to build real fast. The idea was of course to build a rocket engine powered chair. The most important component of this rocket being the command chip, which provided power and a gyroscope so that the Pixie rocket engine, which is an electric cycle, will have power to run. Unfortunately, with such limited time, nothing fancy like landing gear could be put on this thing. So let's send him on his way and hope he doesn't get a face full of moon dust. This little rocket chair actually performed extremely impressively. It had way more than enough fuel and had perfect control of itself with the gyroscope. He slowly descended towards the lunar base and made a soft touchdown on the surface. Only after smacking his face straight first onto a rock. <laughs> he then hopped out of the chair and used his jetpack to go all the way to the lunar base. However, when he got close to the lunar base, his jetpack ran out mid-air. He skipped off the ground over the lunar base and then flew into a rock and died. <laughs> I guess you could call this his gravestone. Well, that's our first man down, unfortunately. But let's have a look what Yan Lekun can design and see if he can survive with his lander. This one is an extremely simple capsule lander design. And I honestly didn't even realize how long five minutes was until I started designing this. I did not know what to put on this thing at all. So I put a bunch of little quality of life things like some lights and solar panels. They're absolutely not needed, but they are nice to have. I once again used the Pixie engine since it seemed to be extremely powerful and useful in the last flight. And we actually got the luxury of some landing gear this time as well. And I even put a nice little camera on the side so we can get some views of it landing. So let's hope with this new set of landing gear and a powerful engine we will be able to softly land without making the druid face plant. Not that he could anyway because he's in a space capsule. But let's see how he does. If there is such thing as a stock craft called the Simple Lander in this game, this would be it. This thing is very simple, has all the needed features and some more, and would fit very easily on most simple rockets. You could probably even adapt this thing to be able to take off again and go back to Drew. However, there is a single flaw to this craft that may get someone killed. Or should I say there's a flaw in the operation of this craft. On the descent, I thought this thing had an as powerful engine as the last craft we used with a chair. However, the chair was much lighter, so it reduced its acceleration a lot faster. This unfortunately ended up with me miscalculating and smashing into the ground. <laughs> Looks like this druid is unfortunately stone cold out. And finally, let's move on to the final lander, which will be constructed within 15 minutes and piloted by, of course, Jebediah. Originally, I wanted to make this lander similar to Blue Origin's Blue Moon lander. Unfortunately, the first attempt I did at that went completely horribly wrong, and I made a completely unfunctional lander that had basically no way to even deorbit because it was that heavy. So I had to restart, unfortunately. Yes, I know that's kind of breaking the rules, but I made the rules. And so instead I went with a more interesting and conventional, I guess, lander design. Or I guess not conventional, considering no designs like this have ever actually landed on the moon. 
It's quite obvious to see where I took a bit of inspiration from with the engine section here, and that is of course from Flaffle's latest video, which I will definitely link in the description. And I also decided why not give this thing a little ascent stage similar to the Apollo lander. It wouldn't really serve a purpose in the landing, but I thought it would be a cool nice feature if the rocket at the lunar base didn't work or just wasn't there for example, we could just send it up on this thing. In that case it would have to be captured in orbit by some sort of orbiting spacecraft because it has no maneuverability, it's just using a solid rocket motor and it's not even one of my modded gimbaled solid rocket motors. But yeah, it's a nice capability and there's even a heat shield on this thing, although there isn't any parachute, so I guess the heat shield's kind of useless. I decided to go with this silvery colour as well as the gold for the engine sections, which is kind of with the insulation style. And I used a texture that I really don't use very often, or probably not even enough, which is the rivets texture on the main body of the lander. I made sure to set them to be really small so that they wouldn't be too obvious and I also set the detail on the paint to be quite low as well so they obviously wouldn't be more obvious. I added some landing gear as well as some solar panels to both the upper and lower stage so that they both get power. You can also control the lower stage separately, I don't know why I did that but I did. I also decided to add some cameras on the outside as well as some batteries so we have some extra power storage capabilities and also just the nice cameras to look through. And finally there is a docking port on the top for that spacecraft to capture us in lunar orbit and take us back to Drew. I would like to take this short amount of extra time to just say this challenge is very weird compared to the first challenge I did with the rockets. I originally was going to build this lander in 30 minutes instead of the 15 minutes that I actually did in this video, but I realised it's really hard to make a lander in 30 minutes. I mean I would be spending like 15 minutes detailing and I don't even know if I would actually be able to detail for 15 minutes straight. <laughs> Whilst I'm not the happiest with how the landers have turned out, I think I did pretty okay. If you have any suggestions for other vehicles I could do with this video type, like more rockets or something else, then let me know down in the comments. Other than that, I should probably mention that all of the crafts in this video will of course be put up on the website for you to download and try out yourselves. Although let's be real, most of them aren't very interesting as they are, but I just do that just in case anyone's interested anyway. Anyway, our lander's finished, so let's see if we can land Jebediah safely and get him back home to his family. This lander sails very smoothly and it's going to take us all the way down to the surface. As you can see I've deployed the 8 solar panels, I've put them in a weird cross section so they are opposite to each other because I thought it looked pretty cool. And we are slowly descending to the lunar base. Here we got some onboard views from the lander. And we're going to very gently touch down on the surface of Luna. With that, Jebediah is our only survivor and we're going to send him back into space to go back to Drew and see his family. And with that, I'd like to thank our members Pedro, Adamcat, Reknarek and Karnasa for supplying the funding for the music you can hear during this video. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.